is this all there is? This is my topic for tonight. I've heard this thought expressed in regard to the world we live in. In fact, many years ago, there was a song, slightly different title, Is That All There Is? And the woman in the song expressed regret at what she perceived to be the barrenness of the world. And people who feel this way often feel there must be more to life than this. And I think I'm going to discuss two ways to address this concern, this feeling. One way is adding to what we know of the universe. And there's many things I could have written here. I wrote, just wrote a few. People believe in ascended masters or extraterrestrials or angels or astrology or whatever. And these beliefs, some of them can't be uh, examined critically. I mean, they, they can't be disproven, I should say. They're possible. One, one of these beliefs, however, astrology, has been tested. And the idea is, in this episode, I talked about gatekeepers of the mind space. And I spoke about how it might be to our good to be vigilant about what ideas we allow to enter and take root in our mind. And so astrology can be tested scientifically and has. Basically, you can read this here, but a simplified version would be, imagine you have 100 people and you have an astrologer, you make each one of them their horoscope. And you give each person their genuine horoscope and the horoscope of two other people. And you don't tell them which is which. And you say, now find your horoscope, the one that describes you. Have them pick one of the three. Have their friends and family pick one of the three. If people don't correct, pick their correct horoscope more than one third of the time, that's, I think, powerful evidence that astrology does not actually, our horoscope does not actually describe us. But there's something about astrology that I think is attractive. And the idea is, I, I spoke in this episode about this idea. And I think that's, this is the idea of astrology, is that if you look outward to the sky, to the planets, to the stars, and you look inward to your deepest self, your deepest traits, that they are one, that they're united. And I think that's a way of expressing that we came out of this universe. And of course, someday we, our bodies at least will return to it. So the first solution to this question or this feeling is adding to the known universe. The second solution is a deepened appreciation of the known universe. I'm going to show you now some pictures from a, a YouTube clip. It's called Powers of Ten. And it starts off with a couple having a picnic. And then it starts zooming out further and further and further and further and further. And then, conversely, it starts zooming in. And the idea here is that there are worlds that we hardly knew existed a few centuries ago. And who knows what other worlds will be discovered. That the known universe is not entirely known, but what we know of it today, it has wonders and mysteries beyond what could have been imagined just a few centuries ago. Now I think that one of the reasons why people feel this way is their universe is too small. It's interesting that centuries ago, when we had little knowledge about our place in the universe, our guess was a small universe, a cozy universe. The universe was just a few thousand years old. It wasn't that big. The stars were just little points of light in a dome that covered the Earth. We were at the center of the universe. And what this does, I think, is an analogy that when you're not self-centered, you can see the stars. And that's like being in the desert, in the wilderness. And ancient saints did go to the wilderness to try to get closer to God. When you're in the city, the lights of the city hide the stars. And the analogy be here, being here is that when we're into ourselves too much, we can't see 
a large part of the universe. We're making our universe too small. And it's kind of like we're creating a mental ghetto for ourselves. We're limiting our perception of the universe. We're doing uh, what I called once uh, uh, the cosmic egg. We're making a small, cozy, but false universe for ourselves. And you'll notice this, that there's people who fear foreigners. They're trying to make their world smaller. They don't want to deal with all these people of other countries. And often people find one book and they say, this is it. This is all I need. They're limiting themselves. They're ruling out all the other books, all the other literature in a way. There was an incident here that uh, the man who burnt the Library of Alexander said, if the library contains matters opposed to my scripture, they're bad and must be burned. If they contain only the doctrine of my scripture, burn them anyway, for they're superfluous. So the rationale was, I only need one book. Let's get rid of this library. And uh, you can read the rest of this quote here. Now, another way of making our universe small is to have one leader. Not a bureaucracy, but one, often it's a man, who's in charge of everything, who is always right, and whom everybody has to pay allegiance to, aside from criminals who are persecuted because they're not following the dear leader. And what happens when we limit ourselves like this? Often we become hateful. We become unhappy. And it's it's like we did it to ourselves. We put ourselves in a prison, and then we find the prison barren. We put ourselves into a mental prison, and then we say, it's, it's, it's too barren in here. But whose fault is that? So the answer to there must be more to life than this, I've mentioned two answers. And I think that the, the preferable answer, in my uh, opinion, is to open up to the universe. Uh, a person wants to believe in astrology or ascended masters, fine, if that does it for them. But I think that another choice, and I think it's a better choice in my own personal opinion, is to open up to the known universe and to appreciate it more. The world we know has mysteries and wonders enough if we could but open our eyes. Of course, if we're too open to the universe, Maybe it's hard to conduct daily life, so it comes down to kind of a balance. Um, anyway, that's my opinion, and uh, thanks for listening.